Hey, so I wanted to go over how merge sort actually works. Um, we're going to use two different visualizations to explore what's going on under the hood. Uh, and then we'll talk about how to pseudocode out um, merge sort and then we'll talk about how to solve it. Uh, no one expects you to intuit just from looking at pictures how merge sort works. Uh, so it's really about implement it play with it, get a deep understanding so that you can re-implement it on a whiteboard later or, uh, you know, in an interview. Um, a lot of times when you're asked to implement merge sort, you're not going to be asked to solve a problem using particularly merge sort because anything where merge sort can solve the problem, there are usually other sorting algorithms that can also solve the problem. That said, we, we see a lot of interviews uh, just that ask you to kind of in a basic sense, implement a sort, and a lot of times it's merge sort. So we just want you to know how merge sort works. So I'm just going to start talking about it a little bit um, and let it run. One of the things uh, that I have done is I've pulled it up in visual visualgo.net. Uh, if you go up here, you can see that there's all these different sorts. We were on bubble sort before, but if you click mer, now you're on merge sort. So I'm just going to go down here and click go, and we can kind of talk as it's going. So as you can see, um, it's similar to the divide and conquer kind of idea in binary search. Uh, but what we're doing here is we're actually sort of dividing up um, ever increasing sections of an array. And we're using some of the same methodology that we use during the merge sorted arrays problem. So you can watch these um, two halves of the array get further bisected into smaller halves uh, and then get merged. So once you have a sorted array, merging two sorted arrays is more trivial uh, than merging, you know, two unsorted arrays, right? So now we have two sorted arrays. Um, and let's just pause here and kind of show you how this process, this merging actually works. So here we actually just have two sorted arrays, right? Um, and so step by step, what we'll do is we'll compare two elements and then we'll copy them down into another array. Uh, we'll, we're comparing the two elements at the head or the beginning of each of these arrays or ranges of these arrays. Uh, and whichever is larger gets put in. And then you get up here to like 15 and 19 uh, and they get put in 26 27 but then when you get up here to 36 you'll note what happens is 36 gets put in and then it's compared to 46 uh, but it, like it's compared to 46 up here but once we put it down we actually are running another comparison right here so this this step is actually another comparison set where 38 is being compared to 46. So you'll see that this other array drains faster than the second array. Um, and so you see, uh, you know, 47 is in, and then 48 and 50 are both larger than the nothing that's in the other side of the array. So this is how the merging part happens. I want to move on to another algorithm visualizer to show you how the partitioning part happens. Because in this, it sort of seems like, you know, we kind of are doing like small windows across, right? This seems like we're dealing with windows here, right? We've got like a window in this experience. Um, maybe like how binary search would kind of have two flags, but that's not actually what's going on. This algorithm is more of like a recursive algorithm. It's one of those times when recursion is useful. Um, and so if we just kind of go like step by step, you can see that this, this image here represents an array of unsorted integers. And what we've done is we've bisected the array. So if you look, this, you know, um, is this first half, right? So we've pulled down our first half um, and then we do that again, and then we do it again, and then we do it again until it's one. Because an array of one is a sorted array. It's totally sorted, right? No matter what is in it, it's completely a sorted array. So then 
um, you'll note that we once we have these two uh, arrays of one that are pre-sorted, we can run our sorting algorithm on them, right? We sort of pull them all down into one individual array. Now, the reason why this is like not stopping to sort of pull them back up is because what we're doing is we're recursively calling merge sort, right? So um, basically for every time this bisects, the very first step is to check, is are we at one? And if our array is larger than one, then we need to bisect the array. And so the first step in the merge algorithm, or merge sort algorithm, is to bisect the array. Um, and then you'll see, once we get to the end, though, of this, uh, this first list, we don't keep going, or we do. We do in this uh, instance. Sometimes you stop. You'll see in Python Tutor later. But uh, essentially, we we create a lot of function calls, and this, this overhead does cause problems, and so it's why merge sort isn't like the very best sort of all. Um, but what we've done is we've, each one of these represents a function call, each little box, right? And each one of these little fun things represents a function call. So now we've kind of reached the maximum depth of our function calls, right? So um, at this point, this is when we begin to rearrange, right? So if we just go back, um, you know, these two were kind of already in order. But if you look, um, you'll see these next two, right, get resorted and rearranged. Um, and then because these two function calls have ended by kind of collapsing, these this function call can continue. So this, the first step is to bisect. The second step in the merge sort algorithm is to call the merge sort algorithm on the bisected arrays. Once the merge sort algorithm has finished all the way down to the individual elements, then it will continue. And so the third step is to just merge the sorted arrays. And so when you're merging a sorted two sorted arrays of length one, all you have to do is see which one is larger, right? But when you're merging, um, you know, larger lists like this one, right? What you're doing is you're comparing that first one. So we can kind of think, you know, up here, um, if we look at the middle, right? Um, what's happening is we check three against 15 and then we put three down because it's larger. Then we check five against 15 and we put five down because it's, it's smaller, I mean. Um, and then we put, we check 38 against 15 and we put 15 down because it's smaller. We check, you know, 26 against 38 and we put 26 down. Um, so we're just checking the beginning of each array. So here, these two got put down and then if you watch, this next one is like the beginning of this array because this, this element was gone. And so this is the beginning of this array and this, this array is gone, it's empty. So then we add that together. And then it happens again, it kind of goes down into the next time this function was called, right? In a depth first manner. So you can see this come in like that. And then now that this has occurred, we're not going to go down to here because we're not iterating like this. We're sort of depth firsting. So um, this, uh, these two function calls have now completed. So this is ready for the third step. This is now on step three of its call to itself, the merging of the two sorted arrays. So then those two arrays are merged. And then what happens is this is done, but this is not. So this can't complete. This one wants to complete next, but it can't because this is still open. And this is still open. And this is still open. And this is still open, but now it's completed. And so it's returned the element of that is size one. And they've, you know, arranged the elements, right? 
So there's another one, and then now this one can begin to close. But before this one can close, remember, this will have to close, so will this, so will this, and so will all of these. So to kind of talk about, you know, how do we uh, deal with merge sort, it's first bisect the list, then it's merge sort on bisect on like the left instance, and then merge sort on the right instance, right? Um, and then we only want to bisect the list if nums, uh, or if the passed in number is uh, the you know length of uh, greater than one, then we want to bisect the list. And then we want to merge sort. And then after that point, what we want to do is merge the sorted lists, right? So there, that's how we do it. So there's that visualization and that visualization. I've linked both of them in the merge sort page. So just look below and you can see these things run.